This is Algebra 2, Lesson 8.3, Mutually Exclusive Events and Venn Diagrams. Mutually exclusive means cannot happen at the same time. So um, the easiest example I can think of is if you are looking at a bag of M&Ms and I say, what's the probability that I pull out a single M&M and it is both red and blue at the same time? Uh, that probability is zero. It can't be both red and blue. It's either red or blue. The probability of both is zero. If two events are mutually exclusive, then I can find the probability that either will happen, meaning the probability of A or B by simply adding those probabilities together. If the events are not mutually exclusive, meaning the probability of A and B is not zero, then I would find the probability of A or B by adding the probabilities again, but then I'd also have to subtract the chance that they would both happen. If I didn't do that, I would be over-inflating or double-counting the probabilities. We'll get that down to that in the examples. Of the 100 students in 12th grade, 70 are enrolled in mathematics, 50 are in science, 30 are in both, and 10 are in neither subject. A student takes mathematics and a student takes science are two events. Are these events mutually exclusive? So I know a student isn't going to be in science class and math class at the same time in the same class period, but is it possible for a student to take math and science? Yes. 30 are in both subjects. For events to be mutually exclusive, the probability of A and B has to be zero. But since the probability of math and science is 30 out of 100, yes, the events are, oops, huh, no, the events are not mutually exclusive. Basically, they don't equal zero, they equal 30, so no, they're not mutually exclusive. Complete a Venn diagram that shows enrollments in mathematics and science. So I'm going to draw a math circle, and I'm going to draw a science circle, and I will also add a box. So this first circle is the math circle, not this region the whole circle. So that whole circle is 70. This whole circle is the science circle. The whole circle is 50. 30 are in both. Here is my 30 are in both. So I cannot throw a 70 in this circle. If I throw a 70 in that region, that would be 100 in the whole circle. I only put 40 in this circle because the whole circle is math. So the 40 and the 30 put together, that gives me my 70. My science circle should have 50. Since I already have 30 in the circle, I need 20 more to make my 50. I drew the box around to show that I can put my neither in my outside region. So I have 40 in the math but not science. I have 20 in the science but not math. I have 70 in all of math, 50 in all of science, 30 in both, 10 in neither. So we already know these probabilities, 70 out of 100, 50 out of 100, math and science is 30 out of 100, math or science would be math and science, I'm sorry, it would be math, yeah, and science, but not the students in both. If I added up 70 and 50, I would be double counting these students in both. That's why I have to subtract them off once. 
So that is 120 minus 30 leaves me with 90. My last says not math and not science, and I already knew that answer as well. One more example, a pretty simple example. Suppose a die is rolled. Let A, B roll a 6, and let B, B roll an even. Find A or B. So A is roll a 6. I have a 1 in 6 chance of getting a 6 on a standard die. Plus B says roll an even. I have a 3 in 6 chance of getting an even on a standard die. 2, 4, 6. But notice 1 out of 6 is for a 6. 3 out of 6 includes 2, 4, 6. I double counted the 6. So that's why I have to subtract off A and B. Which numbers on my die are both 6 and even? Well, 6 is the only one. So this is a simple way to really illustrate how we don't want to double count that 6. So I'm adding A and B, but I'm subtracting off a 6 because I double counted the 6th. And that leaves me with 3 sixths, or 1 half, or 0.5, or 50%. They're all the same thing. That's it for the notes. Good luck with the exercises. Let me know if you have any questions.